Hey guys, welcome back. I've shot this video eight times now, and I've gone full circle on my aim for the video, so I'm just going to show you how I went about removing a registry key that I actually added myself. Now, this is interesting because I did this myself, trying to mess around with my Trojan a little bit, make it a little more, uh, a little more dangerous, and I actually spent about the next hour trying to fix it. Because, apparently, my changes were not sticking. Like, I knew exactly what to do, I knew I had to go into the registry, and I knew where I had to edit it, but my changes were not sticking. So I'm just going to unpause real quick and show you what's happening in a normal boot, before I go and fix it in safe mode with command prompt. So on a normal boot, what happens is, you boot up, and you just see the welcome screen. It never boots into Windows. So let's try and insert control delete and this Trojan's going insane. Now my big problem is my Trojan isn't running properly and that, that makes me mad. See this is not a proper running of the Trojan. I don't know what's up with the line but I'm going to look at it soon. Anyways, so we know normal mode ain't working. So I'm going to boot into safe mode with command prompt. Why? Because I know that's what works, darn it. All right, we're in safe mode with command prompt here in a second. I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to examine why my Trojan isn't working, because that makes me mad. All right, we're going to go to CDC Windows. Can we do an edit still? Wow, look at that. Edit color dot that. So it copies it to the uh, start menu. I have a feeling that colored off that actually might be a default program. That'd be very odd, but I wonder. Well, the problem, I, th I don't know what the problem is with the program, but it annoys me. Anyways, I'm going to show you exactly how to remove it. If this, are you kidding me right now? All right. So removal or fixing, it's pretty simple. So if you have a startup problem like this, your first response should be to look in two places, the startup shell and the startup folder. Now, navigating to the startup directory is very easy. On Windows XP, the startup directory is located in, I'm going to go all the way back, CD, C. From the root directory, you go CD, C colon home path, and parentheses around that because it's an environment variable. You go start menu, programs, holy cow, and startup. This will navigate you to the startup directory. Now you take a look and you see nothing's in the startup directory. So clearly that isn't the problem. However, you probably could have insinuated that the startup directory wasn't the problem from the fact that Explore Executable didn't load properly. So you know at this point that something must be up with, re with the registry. So we'll take a look at RegEdit. Now, I've already navigated to this part, but I'm going to show you how to navigate to it just, just to cover my bases. All right, here we go. To navigate to the startup shell, you do, you go under H key local machine, you go to software, you go to Microsoft. Did I screw that up? What the? Oh, I already have, whoops. <laughs> you go to Microsoft, which I already did. You go to Windows NT. You go to current version. You go to WinLogon and you click on it. Now, under WinLogon, you'll find a lot of stuff, but what you're looking for is something called the shell. Now, it's right here. This is the shell. As you can see, the shell data value is currently C Windows Color .bat. And that's not the default value for the startup shell. That's not even close. The only thing it has in common is it's in the Windows directory. So, the normal response from someone who knows what they're doing would be to change this to explorer.executable, and that's what I did. And it didn't stick. 
and I tried it again, and it didn't stick. Finally, after doing this multiple times, I figured out that apparently it doesn't like it when you change it to explore.executable. So I gave it the full path. Because explore.executable is located in Windows as well. Now, I've no I don't know if changes will stick from safe mode or not, but I'm also going to go to the Windows directory and remove that noted file because that obviously must be what's screwing it up, right? I mean, what else could be doing it? It was clearly pointed at that file, and that's what was boot going on boot up, so it must be incorrect. As a side note, if you've ever seen the, uh, <laughs> if you've ever seen the IRC faggot worm, then you'll know that it would mess around with the registry value for user default name, which is right here. That would modify this value to be uh, something else. Now, if you've seen this worm, you know exactly what it is, but uh. I'll I'll save you the uh, trouble and I'll link it in the description because this is the variable name that I think they messed with. Now I think they also messed with the alt default username, which I think goes in when they're not matching. But don't quote me on that. I quit. Let's. See. This would be the one time the question mark did what I wanted. Okay, it didn't do what I wanted. Nope. So yeah, this is what the IRC worm that I mentioned changes. And before you go going crazy on me, that's the name of the worm. I didn't name it. It got named that way by, I think, Kaspersky and McCat. I don't even know. It was Kaspersky and one other, but I don't remember the other one. This is all information from someone else. And I'll link you to their video because that's the right thing to do. Now, I know that it's pointing to a batch file called color.bat, so I'm going to remove that from the Windows directory. I'm going to go CDC Windows, if I can ever type. Do our directory listing. Let's do a directory listing bear. That ain't gonna happen. Let's check basically to see if what we're thinking is actually here. Direct. Oh wow. Make it full screen. Goodness gracious. Let's do directory B pause. So we see right here, color.bat is clearly in the directory. So let's get through the rest, and let's delete it. And it's gone. So now we've taken care of everything we need to take care of to reset. We can reset into normal mode. We know that at least what it's pointing to shouldn't be there. Even though it might not boot into Explorer properly, we know that at least the file that it's pointing to is gone. So if it resets the path, it'll be pointing to nothing, which means we will be able to actually operate under the normal shell. Now, sadly, my changes didn't stick, but because I deleted color.bat, at least I can use my operating system. So we're going to go into regedit again and try and fix it. Hopefully this time my changes will stick. This is one of the most baffling things of everything I've done. See, the, the shell changes didn't stick, and I can't explain why. That is the one problem I've had doing this, is that my shell changes do not want to stick. Alright, change it again. Let's just nothing else we can do but reboot. Alright. Now, if you've done this a ton of times and you're just, it's not working, you can always try to download a registry cleaner or a registry fixer. I tried C cleaner and it did nothing for me, but I fixed it myself. Once again, my changes aren't sticking. This this is the most baffling part of the entire thing, for sure. By a long shot, the most baffling thing is that sometimes your changes do not stick. Well, anyways. I guess I'll go through that, too. <laughs> this is the more complicated way of doing it, isn't it? I know Chrome's on my desktop. Uh, we'll go to CCleaner. As you can see, I've already searched for it. Download it. Free download, free trial. Download will start automatically. I clearly already have the same setup file in my downloads. Run. Accept this window because we don't need that anymore. Next. I don't care about any toolbars or anything at this point. It's a virtual machine. It'll give me more stuff to make videos on, if nothing else. Finish.
All right, so I think Sea Cleaner launches on its own without my help. Start trial. Activating trial. Your trial's expired. I'm like I care. All right, we're gonna go to registry and we're just gonna let it do its stuff. I'm gonna let it scan for issues and see if it'll bring up what we're looking for. So we've got an invalid or empty class file. All right. This is all right, and we've got a missing UE reference, which is in the locals, temporary. What a surprise. So uh, let's fix the selected issues. Yeah, sure, why not? Nah, I'm just kidding. Sure, let's fix the issues. Yep, yep, close. All right. And uh, what else should I do? Probably run Regida 18 more times to see if it actually cares to do something this time. All right, we need to fix the login shell again. And before I exit out of the machine, uh, I don't have keystroke processes. That's very odd. Well, of course I don't. Um, I'm going to run it one more time and see if my changes actually aren't even sticking before I get out of the program. And this, in this case, they are. Okay. So uh, we'll reset the machine and we'll see if it's fixed itself. I ran CCleaner and I changed the registry again. And it looked like it might have stuck. So the only thing to do now is to run it again. Let's see if we launch into the correct thing this time. There we go. So after 12 minutes of video, we finally fixed it. So in general, the fix is to identify what the problem is, think about how to fix it, and then go and fix it. It's pretty simple. Everyone knows that. In this case, the problem was I wasn't launching into Windows properly, so I narrowed it down to it could be either the startup shell or the startup folder. Instantly, I realized it had to be the startup shell because if it were the startup folder, Explore Executable would still be working. I went and I looked at the registry. I saw what was going on. I deleted the file it was pointing to, even though I knew that was the file it was going to point to because I made the file myself. I um, From there, I booted into normal Windows. I downloaded CCleaner. I tried to fix the registry that way. It didn't work. I just fixed the registry myself, and after two tries of trying to fix the registry myself, it worked. So that's everything. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my 13 minute adventure. It was as much fun the first time, I'll tell you what. Or the second time, or the fifth time, or the sixth time, or I think I'm on the seventh time now. Yeah, I think this is, is this the eighth try? I think it's the seventh. I think it is the seventh. I lost track. Anyways, I've been dragging on for 13 minutes and some change. I hope you enjoyed, and uh have anything to say, drop a line in the comments, by all means. So uh, I'll see you.